Hi YouTube, I'm back. Okay, you guys, I know you guys are like, where have you been in? You know, like, why aren't you on YouTube where your videos, your videos just disappeared off of your channel? You disappeared. What is going on? I'm doing fine, as you can see. Um, nothing's happened or anything. I just didn't like my videos. I um, didn't like the quality of them. I didn't like them, so I decided to delete them and do all new videos for you guys. Um, some of the videos will be a products from my previous, you know, videos, but, you know, um, I would try to do a better review. What I decided I was going to start doing is writing down cold, um, excuse me, cons and pros, what I like, what I dislike, goods and bad about it. I'm you know, trying to do a better review, having all the information and not being on my videos like, um, um, huh, um, yeah. So, but y'all do not know, I have so many products to, like, review for you guys, it's unbelievable. If y'all knew how many products I had to review for you guys, y'all be so happy right now. So, today we're re going to review the Corez. Wild Rose Foundation Brightening Long Lasting FPF 20. Okay, so oh, excuse me, my nose is itching. My color is WRFN. WRFN is the same exact color as Mac Studio Fix Fluid and NW45. Okay, so this is the bottle right here yes now let me pour some out to show you all the color yes. this is the color it is the same exact color as Mac Studio Fix Fluid W45, but as you can see, if you're looking in the camera, it has some weird undertone to it. Kind of looks peachy colored, right? Or something. And it kind of looks peachy colored or something. Basically, it's the wrong color for me. It's the right color foundation, but it's the wrong color undertone. The undertone is way off. I can have the perfect color foundation that matches my skin tone and if the undertone is off, then the foundation will look very, very bad on me. And that's just what happened to me. I went to support and was looking for some foundations. I wanted to try something other than high-end foundation, something not drugstore, but not high-end, something in between. And that's what I've been doing for you guys. I've been going to get stuff that's like really in between so I can do reviews and I have so much stuff y'all wouldn't even believe. Um, but stay tuned. So, and, you know, it looked pretty in the store, but the store had really bad lighting. Don't they all? And when I got home, I was like, uh-uh, this makes me look dark. I was like, uh-uh, this ain't my color. But I put so much stuff on. I took my makeup off. I put moisturizer on. I think it was a four moisturizer. And I put, um, whereas mattifying all control lotion on and then I put Corez face primer and the um, oak in the little burgundy tube and then I put this foundation over it and I used the Sephora foundation slash powder brush and I didn't like it oh. excuse me I didn't like it none whatsoever at all I didn't like it um it just wouldn't blend out. It wasn't acting right. It was just something, you know. And I just was like, I don't like it. I don't like it. And so I was like, okay, well, what about the face powder? And she was the girl. I was like, well, we don't have the face powder. And we're out. So we went and found me a cargo face powder that I put on top. I and mean, it made it way look way, way better than what it looked at. And But when I got home, that's when I got to see the real me. And I was like, no, this is too dark. And I believe this is a good foundation for someone who is an NW45 in MAC 
or a cappuccino, your Revlon, or in between the caramel oily combination and cappuccino oily combination in Revlon because Revlon is another duke for MAC. I believe that the Revlon Color Stay Caramel and Oily combination is more closer to the Max Studio Fix Fluid as far as undertone. It's yellow undertone, but it's very, very close. I believe if you mix cappuccino and just enough caramel, you would get the Max Studio Fix Fluid. But I was like, I'm not spending my money on Revlon. And this is not about Revlon. This is about the Caress Wild Rose Foundation. So I think this is a good foundation. But I don't think it's a good foundation for someone who has imperfections in their face, okay? For example, I went to Macy's or Dillard's or something last week. And I tried on the Chanel Matte Foundation. And it wasn't really so the color that just was messing with me. It was the fact that it showed all my wrinkles in my face. I mean, I looked at like an old hag when I looked in the mirror. And I was like, no. This really shows what age and how I truly look. I really just like the MAC right now. That's being my favorite. Um, I normally switch to my um, fashion fair during the winter because I can wear it, but it's not quite all the way cold. So I'm still on the MAC. The MAC is my color. And okay, as this is drying, this is drying on my hand. And it's changing color. Yes, it is. But I believe. This color is like for somebody, um, oh, I can't remember her name. Let me see. Let me go look up her name while I'm just, you know, talking to you guys. But basically, I give this foundation a 7 because it doesn't, it's a medium to full coverage, but I don't see it covering because the more that you put on, the more that it looks just weird. That's all I can say. It looks weird. The more you put on, the weirder it looks. And yeah, that's her. Her name is Dizzy016. Um, I think it's the perfect foundation for her color. This foundation is her color when it dries. And I think it's a perfect foundation from her for her. Um, for me, no. I have yellow and red, but I'm more yellow right now because it's winter when I Summertime, I get red. This found I have put a lot of foundation on this side of my face and less on this side of my face. And I just didn't like it until the cargo powder was on top. And I didn't like that I had to mix products. And it just, just wasn't working for me. So it's a good foundation if you don't have any skin imperfections. If the undertone of MAC in W45 is not correct, try this. This is a different undertone to it. Um, it smells good. It spreads nice. but And it went on nice because I used the Sonia Kasha flat top brush. But the color is just all wrong. Wash it off and put my MAC back on. And that's what I have on right now. My MAC in W45. Um, I used the Sonia Kasha flat top brush. I patted in my concealer, which is in W45. On my imperfections, I have a lot of pimples, but you can't see them because of that MAC concealer. It's really good. Um, and I sprayed my face with the All Night Spray by Urban Decay. As you can see, I am getting oily on my nose. So that's interesting. I just bought that tonight, so I'm just seeing how it's working out. Um, lips is Carmex, and I put the mineralized skin finish around the perimeter of my face in a cargo blush, which is the same color as the deep dark mineralized skin finish, but it's on the pink tone. The mineralized skin finish in deep dark is, you know, more on the orange tone. So, yeah. Um, if anybody out there, you know, needs the foundation, they want to try something new, I would, I wouldn't, I would not suggest this, but if the undertone for MAC is not what you like then yes try this it might be the correct undertone I would say someone who's darker than me that's who should try this because the undertone it, it turns you so dark I don't I just don't like it I like the MAC it lets me shine through so I just hope they come out with um, a MAC um, oh I can't remember the name of it right now but bye